Now, a story that has been reported but won't quite go away alleges that Harry and Meghan have attempted to gag teachers and students as young as five from making future comments uh, about a Sussex's visit to a school in 2021. I feel like it's very thin-skinned, and obviously if Meghan does go into politics, she won't have the luxury of gagging anyone in the public. Uh, why would the Sussexes attempt something like this? I mean, the, the perception was only going to be poor, wasn't it? I mean, this is one of those things that really highlights their need to kind of control the narrative around them. Uh, you, we obviously know that in the royal family, they felt like they didn't have the protection of the firm in terms of influencing the conversation about them, you know, leaking stories to the media as they claimed that were unfavorable to them. So their image has been something that they've really tried to curate as accurately as possible. Um, I have heard rumors that actually the gag order was, uh, upon a recommend was, was upon a recommendation of a member of their team. So it didn't actually come from them. Um, but it wouldn't surprise me if that's something that they, they went uh, on board with, you know, the, this um, visit that they did to the, um, made to the school in Harlem in 2021, you know, you could have children saying all sorts of things that might not be particularly favourable. They might, they might say she didn't smell very nice or she wasn't very polite or whatever. And obviously to have that swirling in the media, particularly at the, at the time that they did uh, conduct this visit, might not have been particularly opportune for them. So I, I, I'm not surprised that something like this will, will happen. But you're absolutely right. If Meghan were to enter the, the spotlight in a, in a different way in, in the political arena, she wouldn't have uh, the, the comfort or the backing of, of being able to gag everyone. You know, political uh, politics in the US is, or anywhere, but particularly in the US is blood sport. People run campaigns based on a gaffe you made 20 years ago. Uh, and, you know, there's more than enough content for, 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 for people that would want to put out negative um, press coverage about Meghan Markle. I mean, I'm pretty sure there are staff members in the royal family that won't have a lot of positive things to say about her. Um, but I think what this really does highlight is the fact that the Sussexes are so adamant that they want to curate their own um, public image. And unfortunately, the more they seem to do that, the more they actually fail. Uh, many people don't understand, but actually the royal family... Um, and, and their coverage of, of Prince Harry over the years, even from his Nazi costume to all the, the gaps he's made, they really actually saved his public image because ever since he's left and he's been completely in charge with, of his image alongside his wife, Meghan Markle, it's completely tanked. And it, it just shows that sometimes actually having the protection of people you may not always agree with is a blessing more than a curse. Here, here. Now, more commentary this week on the long-running furor between Harry and the royal family. While it appears that reconciliation is the best way to mitigate the risk, it appears that stubbornness still seems to be the order of the day. Where are we up to? So there have been reports that uh, King Charles is saying that his, his long-standing feud with the Sussexes is unsustainable um, for, the, for the monarchy. It's unsustainable for the firm's brand um, because ultimately King Charles is seen as, as this figure of unity. He is the monarch here in Britain. And it doesn't you know, sound very unified when, you, when you're, you're basically estranged from your son and his wife. Um, but the reality is apparently the, the, the Duke of Sussex has been insisting on a personal um, private apology from uh, King, uh, King Charles and, and William. Um, which both are saying they're very reluctant to give. It's uh, very unlikely that they will ever give an apology, particularly to Harry or even his wife. Um, and the reality is, ultimately, you know, King Charles has to realise that the public understands what's going on. They're on side. King, uh, Prince Harry has had, you know, many opportunities to reveal her side of the story. And every time he's done that, his opinion polls have tanked. Uh, many people are, are actually sympathetic to the king that in his old age, he still has to deal with whatever, you know, fallback comes from the Sussexes moaning about their time in the royal family. I've often predicted that th this, this feud is just going to calcify and become the status quo. And we're just going to get on with it. And I think it's actually going to create this chasm between the Sussexes and whatever they have going on and whatever aspirations they have, whether it be politics or just doing good, and the royal family that have always been about public service and will continue to be about public service and duty. Um, so I, I think, you know, I understand the king's apprehensions about the, the, the sustainability of this feud, uh, particularly what it does to the brand of the royal family, but him as a father as well, not being able to have much contact or relevant contact with the son. But ultimately, I think that is the, that's going to be the status quo, and I, I think the public on side actually um, or on the royal family side in this case.